to 4, 9, 5, and 11. And you have to check the week in review sheet because there are a lot of omitted sections in 5 and 11. Almost everything having to do with the subject. Yes? Do you want to maybe go over non-idea gas No. So the question was to go over non-ideal gas uh, There's no, well, we use a model, Van der Waals, but the real question is, what is a real gas so we, should, we should start with that. So our ideal is Pb equals nRT. So we know that this pressure is nRT over G. And we went through this that if we were to plot it, we would get a hyperbola. Now this is, you know, with a certain number of moles and a certain temperature. And then if we increase the temperature, we get another hyperbola higher. And you know, it, it makes kind of sense. Uh, at low pressures is high, the volume is high. At high pressures, the volume is low because you're compressing the gas. Okay, that's the idea. How about the real? Because this, this is what we want to model. We want to get to the real gas. So a real gas looks like this. At high, uh, low pressure and high volume, it behaves very ideally. But the big thing about a real gas is if you press and press and press and press, you get the molecules closer together. If they're closer together, then the intermolecular forces start coming to play, and you can get condensation to a liquid. And all phase transitions occur at a constant temperature, constant volume. So that means I'm going to have a portion of the curve where uh, uh, pressure constant, not constant, constant temperature and constant pressure. So I'm going to have a, a straight line somewhere. So over here, it's very much like an ideal gas. Then it has this straight line, and then it goes up. So there are two points here we want to note. Over here, and here on, we are a gas. And this behaves pretty close to ideal gas because you're at low pressure, but big volume, smaller space, far apart. Over here, we have the liquid. And if I keep on pressing, I'm eventually going to get the solid. But let's look at this <coughs> part here. This is the phase transition. So this is the phase transition. And a way of, of writing it is the liquid is in equilibrium both phases exist at the same time. So you start with gas, and then you start getting a little bit of a liquid, a little more liquid, a little more, a little more, a little more. And as these molecules are coming closer together, the volume is dramatically decreasing until you get to the point where you have all the liquid. So this is that phase transition. And the, the criteria are, this is constant pressure. Delta P and delta T are both equal to zero. The change is zero, so that's saying that they are constant. So this is the real behavior. There's no way you can get that from an ideal gas equation of space. So how Van der Waals, uh, what he thought was, okay, there are two major things that we omit in the <coughs> ideal gas law. And the two omissions are, it omits attractive forces, that's what makes the guy stick together, condense to a liquid, and also omits repulsive forces. Two molecules can't be in the same place at the same time. So he took PV equals nRT and to the pressure he added 
is a term to correct for the attractive forces. Then to the volume, the V here in PV equals nRT is not really the volume of the molecules, it's the volume of the container. Ideal gas molecules have no volume. They have mass, but they have, they're not even point particles. They have zero, you know, there's no structure to them at all. So he said, okay, that's obviously fake. So we're going to subtract out from the volume of the container the volume occupied by the gas molecule. And notice everything here is molar. The A and the B are constants. Well, I guess it's really usually written B and not N. This is equal to nRT. And we want to sketch this. So we can compare the real, which we know doesn't work in uh, real cases at high pressure. Okay, high pressure works pretty darn good low pressure. And we want to obviously be able to get real behavior. So what I suggested that you do is, first of all, find out, we want to plot pressure as a function of volume, or sketch it anyway. And if you take the time to multiply all of this out, you will find that the highest power of V is a Q. So it's a Q. So then I ask you, okay, let's look at roots of equations. For a linear equation, we have one root. Quadratic equation has two roots. A cubic equation has three roots. So that tells me I've got to have two loops somewhere in my uh, plot where I can have three loops. That's where you get these van der Waals loops that are really weird, and part of them are not physical, and we'll go over that. So this is what van der Waals looks like without me doing anything. Pressure versus, if I solve this for P, and take a particular gas and use the, the A and the B parameters that I look up in the table, I'll get a sketch like this. Now, where is the phase transition? Okay, this you can do theoretically, not in this course, but you can show that if you draw a line through here so that this area is equal to that area, then Anything 
on the, you know, any of this, this stuff involved that we have on the board right now. Pardon? Oh, give it to me. Uh, anyone want to uh, have a problem here? Uh, the, the only only kinds of problems you can have here, and I probably won't give it to you because it's just too much multiplication, is, and we, we, we did one in class, you know, take <coughs> the gas, like I took CO2, look up the A and the B, and calculate what the pressure would be. So we have that one example we did in class that I think, what the, it was CO2. It was CO2. And I think it was about 25 degrees centigrade. It was, uh, the yeah, what, what was it? What was it? About 25? It was uh, 26. Oh, 26. I didn't remember. What was the real the real pressure? T real was what? So the measure of uh, pressure is 44.8. 44.8. What did the ideal say? It's what I solved in class yesterday. Oh, was 60 point something. Uh, the answer was uh, 45.8. No, no, no. That was, that was the uh, Van der Waals. The real one was 60 point, 60 point, 60 point something. Oh, okay. And then the Van der Waals was 45.8, right? So if we just compare this, we can see right away that, you know, if you measure it, this is the pressure. How can, you, know, you can't deny this is the pressure. You measure the pressure. Ideal gas equation in this state predicts 60 atmospheres. The Van der Waals gives 45. Not perfect, but at least it, it gives a correct uh, uh, order of magnitude for sure. And it also shows you something else. What's the difference between the real I mean the ideal and the Van der Waals. Notice the ideal is higher. That says attractive forces decrease the pressure. And let's let's see, make sure we can see that. So I've got this equation. Let me solve it for pressure. So I'll divide both sides by V minus V F. So pressure is equal to N R T over V minus Vn, and then I'll subtract this An squared, minus An squared over V squared. So we can see right away, this attractive term here is subtracting. This says that, remember, this, this is the A here. This is attractive, attractive. This is repulsive. So this is saying that the attractive forces lower the pressure. And that kind of makes sense, because what's happening with pressure? Pressure are the molecules sitting the size of the container. Remember, the definition of pressure is force per unit area. So look at the size of the box. You guys are getting it. But if they're attracted to each other, they're a little sticky. And so they're not getting it as frequently, because they'd rather be close to and that's basically what's going on here. Then you can see what the repulsive force is doing. Because, what are the repulsive forces? You've got this whole volume here. And if I have a molecule, then this other molecule can't move on top of this molecule. You know, the electrons are going to repel each other. So it ends up increasing the pressure. Why is that? Well, think about it. If I have a particular box with a certain number of molecules in it, if I reduce the size of the box, what's going to happen to the pressure? It's going to go up. And so by saying that molecules occupy space, you're reducing the size, basically, of the box accessible to the molecule. I do root mean squared. Ha. Good. 
good old kinetic theory. So let's remember where it comes from. And if you've looked at the extra problems I put out, you'll see that this is an equation I always put, put up. So, ideal gas, dv equals nRT. But now, kinetic theory says that this is also equal to one-third. N is the number of molecules. Little n is the number of moles. And let's set, assume they all have the same mass. Then, and remember, this is just my way of saying average. U is the symbol that Tro uses for speed. Or it could be velocity. We square the velocity. It's same square of speed. So, what would U R M S be? So, U-R-M-S. R-M-S stands for root mean squared. So, R-M-S is you just take the square root of this guy. And that will give you a... So, big deal. You want to do something. Okay. So... Let's, let's get something useful out of this. So, I'm going to just look at this part of the equation. I've got, you know, an equation there. So, I'm going to solve it through u squared. So, this says that u squared is equal to multiply by two. 3n rt over n m. Okay, now we can make that look a lot nicer. This is moles and this is number of molecules. So, number of molecules is just equal to Avogadro's number that's the number of moles. So let me do that. So for, for n, I'm going to put in this. So I have 3nRT, number of molecules is Avogadro's number, number of moles, I guess it should be a subscript, n0, nRT. So the ends cancel. That makes it nicer. So I now have 3RT over N0 times M. And if that bothers you, look at your units. You're going to know what this stuff is, but you just need to look at your units. The units of mass, you probably think in terms of grams. The units of Avogadro's number is something per mole. It could be oranges, number of oranges per mole, number of planets per mole, number of atoms, but it's per mole. What's grams per mole? That's molar mass. So this times this is just nothing more than molar mass. So there's where we get R. So if we're going to do a speed problem or RMS, U R M S. I guess we can plug in. U R M S is equal to the square root of three R T over the molar mass. So let's take something. I don't know. Uh, let's take nitrogen. You know.
read your atmosphere to the R. Well, you can, <coughs> but you still have to convert it so that you have meters and kilograms in it. So we use the value of R on the back of the gas chapter, and I tell you it is 8.3145. So, 8.31451, and units are joules per mole per Kelvin. Kelvin, I am sorry. Uh, we're at 25 degrees centigrade. By now, we know we always add 233.15 Kelvin. Then, so we might as well check off that things are going okay. So the Kelvins are going to be so good. Okay, now we've got to know what Joule is. This whole expression came from kinetic theory, which involves kinetic energy. So I happen to remember, it's one of the few formulas that I remember. Kinetic energy is one half half V squared. Why do I want that? Because that will tell me what the units of Joules are. Joules is a unit of energy. So, this is equal to one joule. So what is it? Uh, mass is the SI unit of kilogram. Velocity would be meters per second, and then you square it. So my joules here is kilogram, meters squared per second. Because I'm doing that, I've got to put in molar mass. I can't use grams. I have to use kilograms. So, you know, go to your good old molar mass table and I don't have it. So what is it? 16, is that close enough? Yes. So, molar mass here would be 2 times 16, but this is grams. I want kilograms, so what do I have to multiply that <coughs> into kilograms? 10 to the minus 3 <coughs> kilograms per mole. Okay, so then our kilograms cancel, our moles cancel, and we now have units, at least the units are right. You know, you might have copied something but we know that we've all the proper units. Our units are going to be meters squared over second squared. You take the square root of it, and that will give you u in meters per second, and you would want a speed in meters per second. Do you want me to plug through? Okay, what I'm going to do is get rid of this dumb thing and multiply by a thousand upstairs. Times a thousand. There we go. Then I won't make it. Uh, times 25 plus 273.15 times 1,000 divided. 
divided by 32. Ah, this looks much better. Uh, 482 meters per second. So that was, yeah, 482 meters per second. <coughs> I just got to make one up. <coughs> Unless you have a problem you want done. Uh, usually in a fusion, you're going after molar mass. And so, uh, and it's, it's all low pressure. So the ideal gas equation of state works. And you can assume that the gases are all obeying URMF is equal to the square root of 3RT the lower mass. So they're all going this speed. So you have an apparatus, you put in a known gas whose molar mass you know, and you measure the rate at which it takes the molecules to escape. Then you put in an unknown gas, and you compare the rate of, I don't know, usually nitrogen to the rate of your unknown. You compare those two rates. And let's say we had an unknown that went eight times faster than nitrogen. So here's how the problem is stated. The rate of effusion of an unknown gas was eight times greater than the rate of effusion of nitrogen. Can you turn that into Write it out. Rate of fusion of unknown is equal to twice, two times rate of fusion of nitrogen. The very first thing you have to be able to do is to turn that into an equation. After that, it becomes a plug-in. So can you make an equation out of that? It's going to be simple, but you have to know where to put. Oh, I want eight, not two eight. I did two in the last, so let's make it eight. Make it more interesting. Eight. chances 
to hit the hole. Then the guys are going slower. So that the rate of the fusion is directly related to the URMS speed. So if I turn this into an equation of the rate of x over the rate of m2 is equal to 8. So what's the rate of x? Well, that's just URMS for our unknown divided by URMS for nitrogen, and this is just equal to square root of 3RT over the molar mass of our unknown, divided by the square root of 3RT over the molar mass of N2. And like we oftentimes see, <coughs> as we oftentimes 